Hi, I'm Linda. Thanks for joining me today. I've got my little sidekick over here, Minnie, a little Maltese. She loves to follow me. She's my little guard dog. So today I just finished up a pretty mountain scene with some birch, silver birch today. And uh, I love doing this one. It's got a runoff from the mountain into a river with a nice path and a, a unique rock, some rocks here. I'm calling this Silver Birch River. So I wish you could follow me, pause and paint. So let's get started. And here are the oil paints I use. Liquid white, titanium white, black, phthalo blue, Van Dyke brown, burnt sienna, sap green, lizard crimson, yellow ochre, cad yellow, and red. And I've already prepared my canvas with liquid white, and then I wiped it off, all the oil off, with a shop towel. So I've gone right into phthalo blue, very light, little extra brushing, brushing across, going down to the center, adding a little dark here and there, and a little darker halfway down, not all the way to the bottom, but just uh, spreading that blue, blending the other uh, way down. Into uh, titanium white, I'm making uh, some little pretty little clouds, brushing circular motions with my fan brush. Nothing fancy, just gonna put in a few white clouds up there, and buffing underneath with a clean, dry brush. Just, just something real simple. So I'm going right down into uh, a little tiny bit of black, a little tiny bit of white. I'm going to make a light, light gray. Maybe a touch of phthalo, but it's on the gray side. It's very light. I'm going to put in uh, a background mountain, very, very much in the distance. So I want it rather light. Put a little amount on palette knife and just spreading a little on there. Probably could have used a filbert brush, but the knife scra uh, scrapes off the excess paint really good. So, But yeah, I don't want to go real large with this mountain because it is in the distance. I'm using the small end of my palette knife to try and uh, get the shape that I want. Scraping the excess off as they go, just pulling down. Getting that tip just right. Maybe having an extra little bump here and there. But it's, it's a, a plain little mound. It's nothing, you know, Monumental. It's just simple little mountain. Pulling down the paint. Still adding peaks here and there. Just pulling down. Taking a dry, clean brush and pulling all that excess paint, pulling it off because you don't need it. Don't, don't disturb the top line. Just pull that excess paint off. I'm going into a little white on my palette knife. Pulling, very effortlessly pulling down getting those little breaks of uh, white in that mountain. Every peak on the right side should have some white highlights. Because that is where the light is hitting. I'm gonna try and outline this 
side just a little bit. I'll be putting some uh, icy blue shadows in there momentarily, but I want to outline the top part of that mountain. There are some snowy areas up there. Trying to get the angle, the angle that you need. Shaping, going into a very light phthalo blue, very light to put in the shadows on the left side of those peaks. Just a little bit. Don't need much. Following through a little bit down on the other side there, trying to get a nice flow. You don't need much pressure on that palette knife. It does take practice, but you sure don't need a lot of paint. It's just a nice little roll and very, li very little pressure. can always go over a little bit with white. I'm taking a little dark uh, gray. Actually, it's not that dark, but it's a, a black and white mix. It's just a medium to light gray here and there just to give the mountain some texture. Taking a round, clean round brush, tapping, brushing upward. Now I'm going to make another little uh, plain of mountain below that, just a little bit. I'm going into a little bit of uh, oh, black and uh, white and a little touch of brown. Just very, I wanted a very, very, very light, uh, and you can see this, just so, almost like a beige, but I want, I'm going to put a little area there where it's so far away, it's background trees and that, you'd never know it, but it's, it's an, uh, putting it at the right angle. I'm going to have my river end up way in the back, uh, of that mountain, at the base of that mountain. So my river's gonna flow back there and I wanna put some make-believe trees and and uh, possibly stones or whatever, but I'm just try trying to make a little wall uh, where that river is gonna go up against. And on the other side, I'm going to put uh, a lighter gray, blue gray. I'm going to have a, another plane, another mountain uh, meet up with that river. So I'm just kind of making an angle there where it looks like part of the mountain. Pulling down with that medium to light gray. It'll all come together after a bit here, but it looks kind of weird now. But I'm trying to get see how that uh, water is going to uh, flow back there. It goes from wide to really narrow. The farther back you go, the narrow it's going to be. And I want it to wind around. The river is going to wind around that, that mountain peak and come around to the center of canvas. So now I'm figuring out where I want to have my tree line. So I'm going to have some trees going in the back. I've got my uh, little one inch loaded with sap green and a little bit of yellow ochre and a touch of cad. I'm just tapping in some trees lighter and lighter as, they, as you tap upward. A 
lot of these trees probably won't even show. It's just background color. Except for the uh, bottom of the peak there in the center where the river flows through to the front. You've got an opening there. So I'm going on the other side. I'm tapping in. It looks like a little channel, you know, a little channel of water going way, way, way to the back. So I'm creating another row of uh, background trees and going way to the top. I've got some sap green with a little bit of Van Dyke brown. I want it darker up there. And that tree probably isn't going to show either. It's just background color for this huge silver birch that's going to go right up to the top of the canvas. Okay, I'm tapping in dark, darker Van Dyke brown, a little bit of black. I'm making another layer uh, to add to um, my woody area. Tapping here and there a little thicker down at the bottom of those trees. More sap green. A little darker. I'm adding a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson there. And sap uh, green and just a little bit of a lizard and crimson. It's like plum trees back there. I don't know, it's fruit trees. It's just to give it some color. It's lizard and crimson, very, very little with a touch of white. Just a tap in there for color. I'm going into like a lime green. I'm going to highlight some of these trees, working my way forward. Tapping in my one inch. It's a little darker. Tapping, getting that edge there where the opening is. The canal opening. Going into a little darker. Step green. Touch of really dark, uh, maybe a touch of black, touch of uh, Van Dyke, but I just want those dark trees in the front there along the shoreline. Tapping. Shaping. So I'm going to make some trees in the background. I'm going into Van Dyke with a touch of black. I'm just going to, uh, I've got a liner brush. I'm just going to etch in some uh, which are going to be little birch trees way in the back. There's some tall ones, short ones. Put as many as you want in there. And I hold my brush kind of, I go down and up twirling as I go up. Twirl a little bit, get that little point on the top. Put some little branches in there, whatever you want. It's a forest, you know, it's, it's wild. Putting some treetops in there. Just here and there on the other side, do the same. It's a lot, a lot of layers to this painting, so I hope you can uh, stay with me because you'll learn a lot here. There's 
so much. I've, I've uh, faded a few things out, but I've left a lot of the most important parts in. So, anyways, just pause and paint. Don't worry about Just back up if you want to to catch up. I am putting some white over off to the right side of those trees that we just put in because they're now they've now become birch trees so I want some uh, lots of birch in the background if you make them thick enough which you really don't want them real thick here but I'm gonna go and put dot some dark uh, black dark brown and black mixed just to give it uh, the look of birch but they're so far in the distance so it doesn't you know it doesn't really matter it matters but it's okay if you don't the ones in front the silver birch that we're gonna do are probably most more important these are so much in the distance so I'm just adding more more birch trees in the back some of those won't even show but it's maybe a little bit okay so now I'm going into um, a little uh, sap green with a touch of uh, red and uh, yellow I'm just touching the top of those birch trees it could be spring it could be fall I'm not sure but it does have some color here on these on these trees just tapping lightly as much as you want a little color so now I'm going into a little bit of uh, Looks like the uh, light brown, very light. Van Dyke brown with some light. I'm going to do some tall birch here with a, uh, looks like a filbert, just straight up. Tapping in with some, that's a scruffy brush. I don't know. Uh, it's a real short bristled brush and it really makes cool leaves you know if you can find a brush like that I think I got mine at Michael's but it's <clears throat> if you dip it to just tap it in your whatever color it, it makes like little leaves I love that little brush yeah I think I got that brush oh god years ago Donna Dewberry um, uh, when she did the two-sided brush, the two-color, I think that's uh, one, of the, one of hers. Alright, so I put some leaves on that tree. I'm going to go along and just dot, dot some white in there. Maybe a little black on the other one, just to give it uh, that birch, birch look. And you can do uh, as many birch as you want in there, actually. Okay, so now I am putting in an evergreen. I put in a, a brown line that, from the bottom of that grassy line all the way to the top of the canvas. I'm just going to I put, put some green, little sap green on my uh, fan brush. A little green and a little bit of blue just a tiny bit so it's kind of a blue green in there I want it dark really dark because this little tree is going it will show up uh, at the end of this painting it will stand out 
So now I'm going to add some. I only did half of that tree. I will fill it in a little bit, but I'm, I'm making the stem a little thicker, just a little thicker, because it, it is an old, old evergreen. But I'm putting uh, three or four other evergreens alongside of that. I'm just waiting before I fill that tree in. So I'm going to put another uh, tall tree there. It's a dark brown all the way up. Or not all the way, but part way up. But it's Van Dyke Brown with a touch of green. Do another one. These trees probably will show a little bit. They're just big old evergreens. One that is an old stem that comes up there. You don't have to make them exactly the same. And then I've got another one that's along this along the edge there. All the way to the top. So now I've got a round brush and I've tapped it in a very dark green, brown, blue, very dark color. I'm just filling in the background there, not all the way down, because that is going to be the beginning of where our pathway is. But I'm just filling some of that in. Now I'm going to fill in my big old evergreen. I've got a, like a size 12 or 13 fan brush. And it works really cool for those great big trees. Just fill that in. And same with the second tree. Just fill that all in. A lot of that won't even show. I'm going to have some birch trees pretty much in front of those. So don't worry, worry about if you messed up. Like at the top where I'm doing now. Don't worry about that. It's a big old a silver birch is going to go right alongside that. You won't even see that. And I'm adding with uh, cad yellow, a little bit of green on a clean brush, tapping in a light area there. That's where the sunlight is. Now paying attention to the shoreline, I'm putting a little darker blue. Pulling, pulling some of that color out and up into the um, where the water is flowing. Just not all the way up, just part way up. Okay, so now I'm at with, with a little fan brush. I've got some accent colors, yellow, touch of green. I'm just making some bushes back there. Just giving it some um, interest, you know, putting some color in, tapping. And on the other side, putting a little row of, could be flowers, could be grassies, I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a beautiful place and I'm trying to make it look inviting and Oh, adding some color. Here I am with putting some, oh, creating some little bushes back there, some grassies way in the distance. Lifting up with my fan brush using the corner. 
You can do a lot, so much with just the corner of that fan brush. You can make so many cool shapes. Very light. Angling. Just by pushing it up. It's just so easy. Don't be afraid of that fan brush. It's your friend. <laughs> okay, with a palette knife, I'm going into with a little bit of yellow and white. I'm going to put uh, some water movement back there, a little white, on the small end of my, short end of my palette knife. And along the shoreline, just putting a little water movement in there. And following through on the other side. Now I'm going with a little bit of a filbert with some white on there. Shoreline needs to be lightened up a little bit. Following through shoreline on the other side. A little bit of palette knife work there. Just a little bit. So now I'm going in with some dark uh, gray, very dark. I'm making a little bit of a, a rock formation in the middle there. Okay, so now I'm adding a little bit of the dark gray, black and a little white. I'm putting in a little rock formation kind of in the center of that painting, uh, just below that shoreline. And then I'll be adding some rocks, little uh, palette knife rocks, light gray. You don't have to be real fussy. It's in, it's in the distance. Uh, I'm going to put some uh, little grassies or a little, um, oh gosh, life growing on top of those rocks. A little yellow with a touch of sap green little stringer. Yeah, they're just little growths that, that are growing on top of the, the rocks. Just tapping here and there. Just to give it a little color back there. And with my palette knife, get, giving it a little uh, water line, adding some water lines in the water, putting a little reflections in the water with the trees in the background, just a touch of white here and there. I'm adding dark, dark brown and black. It's a big rock, big old rock right there that's jutting out. And I'll be adding some shadow underneath that, pulling down some of that color. Just pulling down a little bit of that color in the water. And then off to the right there, I'm going to put another, oh, it's a rock mass there with the dark black and a little bit of white, dark gray there. It looks like uh, little rocks underneath the water, pulling down the shadow some more. It's a light gray. I'll be adding rocks in there. Now here, I want to show you a little trick that I do. I've got a little three, two-inch board. Uh, I put it on top of my palette there. Put my uh, palette, my easel, and I put my painting on top of that. It makes it so much easier. It raises it up about two inches, and it works out really, really good, especially when I use my knife. You know, at the bottom of that canvas, it works so cool. 
So now I'm going into brown, Van Dyke brown, a little bit of red, and I'm going all the way down to the, curving around to the left of the canvas there. And on the palette knife, I've got a little bit of burnt sienna with some yellow ochre. And I'm going to spread some of that around. This is going to be your pathway. So I'm adding a little bit of white. It's a bright area. That's where the sun is going to hit. Anyway, I brought that all the way down around ending up with some very dark Van Dyke Brown at the bottom with a, with a fan brush, blending it in nicely. And now with the fan brush, I'm going to make a big old uh, evergreen that's going to poke out from the side. It really doesn't have a, have a uh, trunk. It's just sticking out of the side of that side of the canvas just tapping my way down tap your way into that pathway just a little bit and then adding uh, with a clean brush I've got a little bit of sap green and uh, cad yellow on that brush I'm making make it look like uh, little bushes there So now I've etched out my rock, my old, my unique rock, using a palette knife. You can use a filbert, which I use to fill in black. And you can adjust that rock, however, I think I did adjust it a little bit more thicker at the bottom, like it's more into the water. And then I took a palette knife with some white, a little bit of white, and just glide, I just glided over the top of it to give it some texture, like an old glacier rock there. And pulling down a little bit of that white down into... Uh, There, see how I pull it down? Cool. All right, now so I'm going into, a, I've got some sap green, a little bit of yellow, not much, but I'm making, at the base of that rock, it's gonna come out into the water a little bit, and just pushing up, just pushing, gently with the corner of that brush, flipping it around, and adding some yellow, just, uh, creating some grafties along that pathway. And you can put as much as you want. I'm putting some a little bit color in the middle of that pathway. Okay, so now I'm working on that huge boulder way in the back. I put some uh, off-white, uh, gray, light gray on that rock. I'll be shaping it a little better with a uh, filbert brush. I just want to get some color on that. It's going to be some trees that go over the top of that. So, And then I'm going to add at the base of that rock, put some more rocks, leaving a little bit of water showing there. And down below there, I'm putting some, a little bit of a yellow ochre and a touch of... Uh, burnt sienna, just a touch, going into a very, very light blue with my fan brush, and going over that rock formation, making it look like, uh, you know, it's the water's falling over the rocks, kind of jiggling my fan brush underneath to give it a little turbulence. Pushing it back a little bit, adding some more lines up there of water, water movement, and underneath that rock formation, just a little uh, bit there. 
little squiggly lines. Fan brush, creating some water movement. And now I'm ready to put in my big old uh, silver birch. I've got some light, very light gray, light gray on a uh, half inch, I don't know, I guess it's a filbert, but I'm going to, it looks rather yellow here, but you need to make it a light gray, very light gray. Putting one there. Thicken that up a little bit. <laughs> Thicken that up all the way down by a half inch. I don't want much, much wider. And then I'm going to make another one. Maybe, uh, little bit narrower not much we're gonna go all the way up the first one needs to be a little darker and I do make it darker after a bit here but I'm just carefully putting in a silver birch Putting one over there on the right side, kind of bowing out a little bit, but I don't want it too close to that rock. In fact, it could be a little farther in, but it's already done, so I need to, <laughs> it's going to have to stay there. And then I've got another one going right along next to it. Start at the top, make sure your line is straight, pull it straight down, and then back up. You can scrape off a little of that paint if you need to with the small end of the palette knife. Okay, I'm going into a little bit of yellow and white. <coughs> And I'm going to tip the right side of that trunk all the way down. All the way down. Same with the other side, right side, all the way down. Just put a little bit of yellow and white on the inside of that trunk. And same with the other three or four on the other side. You're going to have to go on the right side and touch those up just like the other one. So now I'm putting in, I've got a very dark, dark brown, with a Van Dyke brown with a touch of black. I'm putting some little arms or twigs that are going to come out on either side of those trunks. And you don't need a lot of pressure there. Just pull up a little bit. Same with the other side. And they don't go all the way down to the bottom either. They're probably about halfway. And just pull up. Maybe you can start in the center of those and then kind of angle up. Now I'm taking a little off white, it's a little bit of white with a touch of touch of yellow, not much, but I'm I'm gonna go at the top of those uh, branches just a little bit. And starting to put some uh, silver silver birch markings, the traditional markings, which is a little bit of dark gray and black here and there. It's wherever you think, and you just get up, stand back, and look at it. That's what I had to do. It's, it's uh, whatever your eyes tell you. Use your finger if you have to. Just blend it out a little bit. 
So now I'm going with a little bit of yellow and white with a t with a little filbert, and I should have done this in the beginning there with the pathway, but the light is coming through there, and I didn't have quite enough yellow there. So here I am putting some yellow in. I'm going to have to carefully soften that up because that's where the highlights are from the sunlight. So I'm taking a dry brush and just going over the top of that ever so carefully, blending that in. So now I'm going on uh, the tops of those grassies with some a little bit of yellow and white with a with a round with a uh, one inch. You can use a round brush too, but I'm just tapping some little flowers or whatever grassies there on the edge and on the inside of the path. It gives it a little interest there. So now I'm ready to put in some uh, leaves on my my silver birch, and I've got a little round filbert, short. Uh, it's rather stiff. It's a stiff little brush, but boy, it makes really nice little uh, oval oval uh, leaves. All you have to do is just kind of dot dot them on there. Just dot here and there, not not too many though. Just here and there, just push them on. And then I'll be going over the tops of those. Uh, same brush washed out with a little bit of uh, yellow. Just a little bit of yellow, maybe a touch of yellow ochre, but it's gonna be fairly bright. I want to, uh, it's like a two color, two color leaf. After I finish uh, putting in my greens there on this side, and I'm going to add some on the other side too. You don't need a whole lot. You don't want to overdo, but you want enough. So there I'm going over with the yellow right over the top of the green. It should blend nicely. It looks like a little lime green leaf there. Just dot them all. Same with the other side. Wow, I really love doing this one, and I hope you do too. So until next time, happy painting, and God bless.